for engineered wood beams and what the structural engineer needs to know, we'll begin by looking at product basics, comparing and contrasting glue lambs versus structural composite lumber, what are the things they have in common, uh, the common availability and sizes that you would look for and specify. There's also new technology to share and to look forward to implementing into your construction as well. We'll touch on CLT, for example, cross-laminated timbers. And sustainability. This may be something that you're passionate about or someone on your design team is. And so it's an important feature that we need to consider with our built construction moving forward, as well as constructability. We want to make sure that what we specify in design is actually easily built. And the common mistakes that we've seen throughout time with engineered wood beams will be reviewed and lessons learned shared, as well as design fixes if you run into an issue on one of your projects. Proper design and specification will be reviewed in the form of what you want to make sure you specify for your engineered wood beams. And the new literature that's available today through our Glue Lamb resource guide, as well as several new case studies highlighting recently constructed projects that utilize engineered wood beams, glue lambs, and structural composite lumber will be shared. So beginning with structural composite lumber, this is abbreviated as SCL, what do these members have in common? What makes them unique from glue lambs, um, unique from one another, and similar to one another? The main challenge often is that the fact that they are proprietary in nature. Most of these products are produced by varying manufacturers with their own unique stress classifications and their sizes. So one thing they have in common is that they all stand apart from one another. So you want to use the APA product reports or the ICC um, code reports to reinforce your design and to use for your design capabilities. But aside from that, they also have been utilized and maximized as beams, often the case, because of the way that they're manufactured. They're created by taking veneers of wood or strands and then orienting them in the same direction. If you think about a panel, wood structural panel, you know that the veneers and strands, if it's OSB, are cross-oriented from layer to layer, whereas with a structural composite lumber, they're all parallel to one another. And because of this, this is going to maximize its bending capacity and be able to really outperform sawn lumber in that it's taking the maximum strength and getting uniformity throughout. They are sawn to consistent sizes, and as mentioned a moment ago, the properties are found through code reports. Laminated veneer lumber is the most readily available and, and produced structural composite lumber um, of the SCL products. And it is similar in appearance to plywood, again, if we're using that comparison. And when we look at our LVL, we can see that we have the veneers laid up side by side to one another with the grain parallel to the length for every veneer thickness. They're available in a variety of thicknesses from three quarter inch to three and a half inches. Parallel strand lumber is on the other hand, as opposed to LVL, not from veneers of wood, but more similar to OSB that it's manufactured from strands of wood. And they take these strands of wood, clipping them together in the parallel formation as well. So again, we get that similar parallel orientation for the entire width of the member, and it creates a very strong product available to be used as a header, a beam, load-bearing columns. 